Hello ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. Welcome back to another video on the Red Lessons channel. I really do appreciate you stopping by. Today I'm joined by my good friend Carlos. What's going on? And in today's episode, we're gonna be taking a closer look at four fragrances by the company Menditerosa, so stay tuned. So how are you doing today? I'm doing well. My tummy hurts a little bit, but, I, uh. but I'm doing okay. <laughs> of course, I go back to work tomorrow after a week and a half off. But yeah, how I'm, are you feeling? I'm I'm good, obviously. Good. You know. Yeah. So I survived. I, For those I, of you who don't know, Carlos had surgery recently, so this is actually the first video that we're shooting since you came back from surgery. Yes. But you look very well rested. Thank you. And I'm glad to hear the that wife you're feeling noticed. better. <laughs> <laughs> and my other friend noticed last week, so uh, awesome. I definitely got awesome. some rest this week. Yeah, I could tell. Menditarosa Odore di Anima. Yes, that's right. <laughs> this is an Italian house. It came out in 2012. It's made in collaboration with a few different perfumers, mm -hmm. Luca Maffei, Amelie Bourgeois, and Anne-Sophie Behegel. And here we actually have a new collection in which these two fragrances are a part of. And this one is called Osang, and this one is called Sogno Reale. The new collection is called... Uh, um, Colleccione Preziosa, mm -hmm. and it means the precious collection, and the overarching title is the talismans. So a talisman is like a like a charm or an amulet mm -hmm. that you would wear for protection. protection. And uh, these fragrances are supposed to be kind of uh, sacred and meditative, and they're supposed to protect you in many ways. And so... Uh, we have some really interesting blends here, uh, two of which I've actually already reviewed on my channel. So if you're interested in watching those videos, I'm going to leave links to them down below. This one uh, was very nostalgic to me. It just kind of reminded me of times when my grandmother would cook. So I come from a Mediterranean family. We mm -hmm. use a lot of aromatic ingredients, thyme, basil, oregano, fengyu Greek, um, rosemary, the list goes on and on. And this one actually has thyme and Robin Sara. We always start from this side. Why don't we start from that side? Let's do it. This cap, I was saying to you yesterday that it reminds me of like a, a sea urchin. Uh huh. And when we were looking up the notes and what have you, sure enough, this particular fragrance has a sea note in it. It has amber. It has amber, sea notes, and rum. Mm -hmm. And patchouli is a dominant note for me anyway in this yeah. particular fragrance. It's a very clean patchouli, in my opinion, but it's clearly patchouli. It's not as earthy or as hippie-ish as some patchoulis can tend to be. Okay. As I was saying before to you, like, the fragrance doesn't shout, but you can smell it. Mm. It's like a whispered shout, and uh, it leaves a trail. It's it's very airy, very mysterious, as is this whole collection. Yeah. But I get a lot of patchouli, and uh, this would definitely make a patchouli lover happy. I also get patchouli from this one. Kind of in the same vein of like Zerzhov's Richwood or mm -hmm. Chanel's Coromandel. The interesting thing about this one is that I didn't pick up on the C notes right away. And then after we read the note breakdown and I kind of sensed something a little bit aquatic about it. But not aquatic in like your traditional sense of your designer fragrances with like the a K -Lone. Yeah, yeah. And this one perhaps is one of the lighter um fragrances from the collection in terms of the olfactory portrait that it paints mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily in terms of performance because i can smell it off this test strip loud and clear but this is a really interesting one and i do enjoy this one but did you smell it i mean off my skin yesterday. yes i did yeah okay, great. you did and you reapplied a <laughs> yes, few I hours did. into it <laughs> had a couple <laughs> yeah and i actually wore this one yesterday as well Cool. Um, I put a little bit on my skin and it lasted. It lasted yes. for a very long time. So the longevity on this one was a solid eight hours, eight, nine hours. I didn't say the name. It's called Sogno Reale, mm -hmm. which means real dream oh, in okay. Italian. That's awesome. And once again, just to clarify, these two are the ones that are part of the Collezione Preziosa uh, mm -hmm. collection. So the next one is called Alpha. And the one thing that I want to mention right now is when you look at the caps, they have like a synesthetic quality about them, but they also have a mnemonic quality about them because they do help me remember uh, what the fragrances smell like. And so this one is kind of like a Pope's hat and there's a lot of incense in there. This one has metal. Um, it actually does smell a bit metallic Cold. to me. And this one kind of smells like a sea urchin. When I think of this one, it's kind of shaped like a heart if you take a look at it from like a bird's eye view. And I do love this one. This is probably my favorite from the entire collection. There's just something very poignant, very sentimental. You have a very strong aromatic presence. Mm -hmm. 
I do get a lot of time. There's another note called Ravensara in there. It smells very culinary. It has kind of like a green quality when it dries down, like a very light yet herbal uh, patchouli note about it. It's very easy to wear, and the performance on it is great as well. This smells definitely a little heavier than the first one. It definitely smells herbal, um, you know... Not that it smells like oregano or anything like that, but yeah. kind of like the uh, the texture of how, the dried spices. Yeah. That's what I get from this. This fragrance isn't wet at all. The juice is wet, but <laughs> the fragrance doesn't smell... Um, you know how some fragrances smell lush or syrupy? or yeah. This is a dry fragrance. Like I'm with the dry. I have a thing with dry lately. But it is, though, <laughs> and I would totally agree with you. It does have like a dry approach that it takes. Yes. Moving on, we have the Pope's hat. <laughs> but what is the Pope's hat name? This is Osang. Mm -hmm. This is Osang. It has a bunch of resinous notes in it. Labdanum, frankincense. Oh my God. More. Uh, benzoin. Benzoin. Um, uh, yeah, you said frankincense, which mm -hmm. is also olibanum. And then it also has a little bit of a smoky presence, but I wouldn't say it's as smoky as the last one. This smells to me, if you're of Hispanic culture, mainly... Dominican or Puerto Rican, more so Puerto Rican, Boricua. This smells like a botanica, is what this mm. smells like. It's it's has a very uh, it has a very mysterious, witchcrafty kind of thing about it. Like it, it's a it's a goth smelling fragrance to me. I agree. <laughs> I think a lot of times when you think of incense or something burning, it tends to make that association, right? And so this one does have a lot of that. That incense quality. You have a little bit of like that myrrh, which kind of gives like a. Um, That's another one we forgot. A slight, yeah, like a slightly. I don't want to use the word bitter, but it's not as diffusive as like incense smoke, and so it's not like a cade oil or a birch tar. I don't want to give people the impression mm -hmm. that it's an overly smoky scent, but you have more of like the resin in its pure form. That's kind of like what this what this one conveys, and for that reason, this is one of the more spiritual grounding. Uh, meditative ones. So if you have never f visited a botanica, it's a spiritual place where they, you know, have a lot of spiritual items or ritualistic items and they have a lot yeah. of incense and they have statues and candles and all that type of stuff. If you haven't been to one, maybe a better, not a better, but also a descriptor is like a, kind of like a head shop where they sell incense. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it, it has, it's very, it's, this is a dark brooding fragrance to it me. It is. It is, yeah. But but a wearable dark brooding fragrance. Yeah, I agree. Um, I enjoy it. I've actually been wearing it a lot now that the weather is a little bit colder. And so it cuts right through that cold temperature. It's amazing. Any compliments? No. Okay. <laughs> but you enjoy yourself, it's a, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a personal <laughs> scent. Um, this is one also that you can over apply with. And so I did a few sprays. My wife was waiting for me outside in the car. And I, <laughs> I started to think to myself, did I overdo it? And then uh, I guess she didn't recognize it. And so she goes, what are you wearing? And I'm like, oh, it's a new scent that no, I just she received. Said, what are you wearing? That's what she said. <laughs> yeah, more than likely with that facial expression. Yeah. <laughs> but it's one that I personally really do love and I enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Same here. I don't know how how often I would wear it. How would you wear this? Would you wear this uh, not daily? It it would be more like for going out, maybe or I think it would be special occasion. Uh, definitely when you want to make an impression. If you want to give off a mysterious vibe, like you said, I think a lot of these kind of convey an air of mysteriousness about them, and so they're not very easy to dissect or unearth fragrances. Um, there's definitely a complexity in a lot of them. And I remember this one, I w when I met up with the creative director, Stefania Squeglia, uh, we met up in Brooklyn one day and she was telling me a little bit about the entire collection and she actually gifted that one to me. So thank you. And she was telling me a little bit about the inspiration behind it. And I couldn't guess why I enjoyed it so much until she started listing a lot of the herbal notes. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, so that's why I like it so much because it reminds me of my grandmother's she cooking. Has, she's a fascinating uh, personality. Um, uh, you know, when it was like a cold autumn winter day, it was, uh, it was cloudy out. It might've been raining. I met her at this, uh, brownstone, you know, walk up the stairs and, uh, she yeah. opened the door and I was hit in the face with this beautiful aroma. She says that, cause I asked her, uh -huh. it, she said, it, she thinks it was this one. I don't remember for sure, but anyway, it's a good fragrance regardless. Yeah. When I interviewed her, like. When we were doing our homework for this, I said, Stephen, we can't say this. It's not going to come off the way she presented it to us, you know? Yeah. It's like we, we have to do it in, in our style. 
Yeah. But uh, sh- there's always that there's always that fear because you know the creative director obviously they've meditated and dwelled upon it for a long time and they have a sort of image that they want to uh, convey mm-hmm. to the audience or the, the the consumer and obviously you know she can tell the story of these scents and how they were brought to life and materialized so much more eloquently than we can. Um, there you go. But we do love scents yes. and so mm-hmm. we can definitely convey what they smell like and how they resonate with us For and sure. so the last one is called archetypo and archetypo means archetype and this is the one where i commented that it has this sort of chaotic metallic uh top to it and the composition itself is a little chaotic this one is a little smoky uh as opposed to osang which is more of like a raw incense and it's unburned uh, unlit form. Uh, this one, you do get a little bit of that smoke in there. There's also a green quality on account of a few different notes. We have vetiver in there. We have oak moss. We have patchouli. Um, and then there's also a lot of fur in the opening. Mm-hmm. Fur and balsam. So- yeah, so it doesn't quite smell like a Christmas tree the way that Cape Heartache smells like okay. a Christmas tree. Or there's um, what is it called? <sighs> Maison Trudon. They mm-hmm. have a fragrance that smells very strongly of pine. So it's not too strong. It's more of like a balance of the different ingredients in there. But I do get a lot of smoke from that one. What do you think of that the one? The vibe is a little cold to me. It's a metallic kind of smell, if that makes any sense. Yeah. And uh, I don't seem to get the smokiness that you do. Okay. Or not as much, I should say. And uh, it's, um, it's a good one for the winter. It's not something that I would personally wear in the summer or warmer months, mm-hmm. but it, it has a, the vibe to me is cold, metallic, and again, spiritual. <laughs> yeah. All of these are very spiritual and you can just, I think a lot of it is, you know, the conveying of how, you know, strongly Stefania thought about it and how much of a passion she infused and injected into all of these blends. And Mm -hmm. so I think all of these were made without compromise. Obviously, they're so unique. uh, They're so creative. They're so original. I really can't emphasize that enough. These are not going to smell like anything you've ever tried before. And, you know, she has told me personally that they take a lot of different trials and variations until they're finally a final product that she was content with and uh, she just has so much fun making these fragrances with the aid of the perfumers that i mentioned earlier and so it's an incredible brand Uh, the brand has been around since 2012 so seven years now we're in 2019 and with a lot of these fragrances you know um, the newest releases from 2018 and so you have fragrances that were obviously you know um made kind of showcasing her progress from the beginning to the end. And so, um, yeah, really interesting house. Not much more to say about it. So from the collection that we have in front of us here, my personal favorites are Sonio Reale and Osang. Cool. Yeah, mine too. My favorites are Alpha and Osang. And I would also like to mention that Alpha has a counterpart called Omega, like the beginning and the end. Constellations. And so, yeah. Mm-hmm. And also Greek letters. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. Those were our quick thoughts. Quick, but we tried to be as comprehensive as possible on four fragrances by the Italian niche brand Menditorosa. If you're interested in checking out any of these fragrances, I will be leaving links down below. And I also want to say, if you are new to this channel, uh, please do consider subscribing if you took something of value from this video. This way, whenever we do upload future fragrance-related content, which includes reviews, top tens, giveaways, unboxings, house overviews, and a lot of other fragrance-related content, they will get delivered straight to your feed. You never need to worry about having to search up our names or miss anything that we put out. Thanks for watching, everyone. We love you guys, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Take care.